Thank you. Thank you too, Leslie. Uh, just before you run off, uh, we have a slight closing word, if, uh, if you don't mind. But uh, thanks again. It was a very interesting talk. Leslie, who is known from uh, her Google Summer of Code fame. Let's thank her again. All right, just a few closing words, don't worry. Won't be too long. In that case, no. Okay, so it's almost over. Thank you very much for being here. Um, one thing I, I'd like you to inform you about is public transport. So one of the things that uh, we do here at Fossum is we offer a free shuttle bus to the Brussels South Station. So you should know that we're here right now and you should also know that there was a K building. Who didn't know this? Raise your hand. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in any case, the, the free shuttle bus is up there, and the tram, which you will know where it is when you took it, is still where it is when you <laughs> got off. Okay. Where does the tram go? Uh, left and or right, depending on which one you take. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, I also th I'd like to take a short moment to, to, to thank a few people because FOSDEM doesn't happen automatically, although we would like that. Um, so, the first thing is the sponsors, and actually, our biggest sponsor is ULB because, yeah. Yes. So, uh, so. One of the reasons that we can actually have FOSDEM here for free is that we do not pay for the buildings. Uh, we have a little bit of an arrangement with the wireless and whatnot, but in, basically we do not pay. And it's also thanks to being here that FOSDEM grew to what it was and that we are able to have 22 dev rooms and that we're able to have two huge auditoriums and that there's now a new cozy building with spacious hallways and everything. So that's all thanks to ULB and uh, we don't pay them anything. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have corporate sponsors as well. Our corner cornerstone sponsor is Red Hat. They've been very generous this year. But we have plenty of other generous sponsors as well. Um, and actually, you, you are also one of our sponsors because uh, many of you have been donating loads and loads and loads of money. And we would like to thank you very much because without these donations, FOSM wouldn't be possible either. So thank you very much. Uh, especially those that donated in 2011 because I didn't have the time to <laughs> update the slide. Okay, volunteers, another group that I absolutely have to thank. Yeah, so. So we have different categories, and I will shortly go over them, three basically. The first one is actually the staff. So we don't ask any money for FOSDEM. We don't gain any money for FOSDEM. We don't care. We do it all for you and for the community. And so everybody in the staff, that means the guys in the yellow t-shirts who have been uh, working half the past year to make this happen, uh, that's these 27 people. Uh, that's the first group of volunteers. Uh, the second group of volunteers is the video team. Uh, so we've been having video recording in five rooms, the two main tracks, the two cross distro dev rooms, and then the lightning talks. And uh, this has been recorded by the Debian video team uh, and all of these people, which is an amazing amount of work. And so if you missed the talk, which you probably did, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> because uh, it's, all, it's all been uh, uh, encoded right now and it will appear on our website, we hope, 
next week, but please don't shoot us if that's not the case, right? We're just doing our best. So uh, the, we also streamed. We had about 100 concurrent uh, visitors over the streams. And so let's just thank the video team for all the crazy work they're doing. That's a... So that's the guys in green, and Walter is... Oh, 200 concurrent uh, visitors of the streams, okay. And then the third group, which is actually the largest group, that's the guy in orange, uh, more than 47, who just show up and say like, hey, I wouldn't mind helping out, and actually without them, this, I mean, there wouldn't be false them at all. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> Many of them will be cleaning up as well, and that's also very important, right? <laughs> okay, and actually, the, oh yeah, there's a, fourth, there's a fourth group of volunteers, namely our dev room speakers. We've had 474 speakers this year, and actually I had to choose a very unreadable font because these are the speakers of last year because we were all using the internet connection, so I could not update my list, but thank you to all our 474 speakers. That's crazy, actually. So as we're into statistics, a few more. So we had 28 main track talks. Uh, yeah. uh, we had 30 dev rooms in, with uh, 19 rooms available for dev rooms per day. That's uh, three more than last year, I think. Um, we had 36 lightning talks. That's six more. We had 474 speakers, which is 10% more. Um, and so in total, that's 486 talks, and only 12 people were hurt during the making of this conference. <laughs> that's a, a statistic from our Red Cross team. Uh, luckily, most of them had a terrible headache. <laughs> Okay, so the, the, the problem, I mean, it's, we're, I'm not all that proud that we're having more and more and more talks. It's just that people keep submitting more and more and more interesting things, so we feel obliged to, right? But we love it, basically. So then, what about the visitor count? Well, we know for sure <laughs> that there were more than 474 because we had 474 speakers, right? So, so somebody in the team suggested, well, maybe if we charge one euro entrance, then everybody has to give us one euro, and then we know how many people there are. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Still, no entrance fees, right? So uh, we, we have some great guys in our team. Some of them like math. So what, the, what uh, did Jan actually do, Jan Geiseling? He He checked the network. Of course! I mean, we're geeks, right? So, what do the network statistics tell us? Well, there were more than 2,300 concurrent active connections. So, active connections at one given second, which was yesterday. Now, the same guy, Jan, he has been sampling the main tracks. So, he walked into a main track room, and then he was counting the number of people checking the logs, how many concurrent, uh, concurrent uh, connections there were in that room at that time. And he saw that there were between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 devices active per person in such a main track. Right? So if there were 600 people, 200, were, 200 active connections were there. So if we extrapolate that, then probably this year we had around 7,000 visitors, which is totally crazy. <laughs> Yeah, our last estimate was 6,000, but this one is a bit more grounded in math. <laughs> okay, then the network. Harry is going to say something more about the network. Well, first and foremost, um, I know it's not working very well in here, so please don't shoot me. 
Um, it's very difficult to organize a network for, uh, well, approximately 7,000 visitors over a weekend. Um, but, well, we kind of made it work, and these are actually the numbers um, on the network. So we actually got an IPv4 slash 18, which is 16,000 and something IP addresses, uh, that we could assign to visitors, which was plenty. Uh, we had an IPv6 slash 48, and then for the first time we also had our own uh, AS number. And that was all possible because of the RIPE 526 policy, which allows us to get temporary IP space. Um, we all linked this together on a, an uplink we got from Colt, uh, which uh, could handle one gigabit. Um, there were 1,342 uh, access points all over the campus broadcasting our SSID. Um, and this was only possible because the nice people from the Resulp, the guys operating the network at the university, uh, they let us use their access points um, all over the campus, which means that you should have had connectivity um, all over the campus here. And let's give them a big round of applause. So in some places, like Chanson, um, there is little or no wireless coverage, so we have to extend it um, by adding our own access points, which we kindly borrow from Cisco, um, which also has staff on site to support us. Um, and those are tied together with about 2,100 meters of copper cable that are laid down all over the university. Um, to get them uh, to work. And, well, actually, the next point, 32 kilograms of coffee, that's not just the network team, that's all you guys um, <laughs> drinking the coffee in the bars. They used up 32 kilograms of coffee, so give yourself a big round of applause. <laughs> And then over the weekend, um, I was slightly disappointed with you guys. We had a one gigabit uplink, and you only managed to fill one tenth of that sustained. We just peaked over uh, 200 megabits per second, I think, yesterday uh, afternoon. Um, but we saw 8,000 unique devices on the network. Um, I know that we told you guys that we had 7,000 visitors, but most of you carry phones and a laptop. Um, and some of you carry probably even more, so that's not an accurate statistic to just count visitors. And thank you guys, you've all been very friendly because abuse at fosdem.org received zero emails. Um, so thank you for not breaking the internet. Now, um, we had no abuse reports, but that doesn't mean there weren't any issues. One of the issues we had this year were rodents. And this is, um, well, the result of that. We had to get creative in places and suspend our network cables uh, above the floor so that the mice couldn't get to them. Um, and that is the end result. And it's nice to tuck away in a corner so you didn't probably see it anywhere. Um, but that's part of the network in the H building, actually. Um, I'll now hand back to Tias, who will give you some more info. Yeah, just a last, last few slides. The first thing is that we love feedback, right? So most of us, we've been sitting in probably one square meter of this conference, arranging things or running around, not actually going to talks or being able to walk around in the hallways. So we actually don't have a clue what FOSDEM was like this year. Yet, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no. The point, is, the point is that we want to make it even better. And to make it better, we want your feedback so that we know how to make it better. Well, you don't have to tell us how. If you just tell us what you didn't like, then we also know. And you can also tell what you like. Right? So that there's a, if you have a booklet, there's a feedback form. But you can simply send us an email to info, no, to info at fosdem.org. Right? So just drop us an email or fill in this form. And then? Just before it's time to go, um, 
Maybe a little stranger announcement. Basically, now we're going to clean up as soon as all of you leave, and that's a, a, a cr crazy amount of work. So if any of you would not be very much in a hurry and would like to help out, then we would very much welcome that. So uh, you're not obliged, but if there are people here who would like to help with the cleanup, so just picking up some garbage or whatever, then uh, you're very welcome to do so. Um, there's also, I've been told, that uh, somebody, well, not somebody, but would like to make a short announcement. Um, so, John Masters. All right. Thanks. Just, just 10 seconds, guys. So, on behalf of the uh, community of folks that are bootstrapping the new 64-bit ARM architecture, if you maintain an upstream project using auto tools, please rerun auto reconf sometime in the next few months, and let's get this new architecture supported. Thank you very much. All right, and with those words, I would like to thank you all very much and see you next year.